Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving a problem based on a carnival game called Coin Toss. In a carnival game, a player tosses a penny from a distance of about 5 feet onto the surface of a table ruled in 1 inch squares. If a penny, which is 3 fourths of an inch in diameter, falls entirely in a square, the player receives 5 cents but does not get their penny back. Otherwise, they lose their penny. If the penny lands on the table, what is their chance to win? This problem was also taken from the book 50 Challenging Problems in Probability. Take a moment to pause the video and try the problem out for yourself. Alright, let's try to work on the solution now. This problem is throwing a lot of information at us. Let's try to break it down by first highlighting the important information. We know that we're tossing a penny onto a table with one inch squares. Further, we know the diameter of the penny, and we know that we only win the game if the penny falls entirely within the square. Finally, we realize that we only need to calculate the player's probability of winning. We don't actually need to calculate the expected value of the game. Therefore, the amount that the player is receiving is irrelevant to the question. Extracting the important information out of a question is a very important skill. As you can see in this question, there's a lot of information, for example, five feet away and five cents in winning that are presented and may seem important, but are actually quite irrelevant to solving the problem. In general, as a quantitative researcher, you work a lot to try to extract useful signals from extremely noisy data. Therefore, it's a good skill to practice. Let's separate out the important information. Now, let's draw up the grid and see what happens if we drop a few pennies onto it. We notice that if we scatter the pennies fairly randomly, this problem seems quite tricky to approach. However, one key insight we can make is that the edge conditions of the table are quite unlikely. Therefore, if the table is large enough, we can treat the table as infinitely sized and thus, we can focus on a single square within the grid at a time, instead of looking at the grid as a whole. This significantly simplifies the problem for us. We now consider a single 1 inch by 1 inch square with a single penny. We assume that the penny has an equal probability of falling anywhere within this smaller space that we've defined. To start off, let's find the limits of where the penny can be, while still satisfying the criteria that the penny must be entirely within the square we move it to the top left edge. To look at this a little closer, let's now abstract out the penny into a single circle and its center. We can now move this circle around the edges of our square to find what conditions allow for the penny to be entirely within the square. This traces out a smaller dashed square in the middle of the larger square, which is effectively the region that the center of the penny traced out when we moved the penny along the limits of the square. This is our first key insight. We realize that the probability that the coin lands completely within the one inch square is the same as the probability that the center of the coin lands in the small dash square. If I move the coin in any of the directions further out such that the center of the coin was not within that dash square, the edges of the coin would breach the edges of the square and therefore we would lose the game. We can now make a second key insight. We realize that the probability that the center of the coin lands in the small dash square is simply equal to the ratio of the small dash square's area to the larger one inch square's area. This is because we initially assumed that the coin had a uniform probability of landing anywhere within our search space. And thus, the probability density is constant throughout our search space. This allows us to drastically simplify our problem. We can now simply solve for the area of the small dash square. Since we know that the diameter of the coin is 3 fourths of an inch, we know that the radius of the coin is 3 eighths of an inch. Thus, the side length of the dash square is 1 minus 2 times the radius, giving us 1 fourth of an inch. Finally, we find that the probability of winning is 1 fourth squared, which is the area of the small dash square, divided by the 1, which is the area of the larger 1 inch square. This gives us 1 by 16. As you can tell, this is not a very large chance of winning the game. 
even though we weren't asked to compute it. A quick back of the napkin calculation shows us that the expected value of playing this game is negative. Every time we win, we only receive 5 cents. However, every time we lose, we are losing 1 cent. And we are only winning 1 out of 16 times, assuming that we can have no skill in this game. Further, let's notice an important assumption that we implicitly made when we were solving this problem. We assumed that the edges of the 1 inch squares on the table had no width. Of course, in reality, this is an unrealistic assumption, because in a carnival, the squares would be drawn using tape or a marker or some other medium that has finite width. Can you attempt to find what would happen to the probability of winning if we make some reasonable assumption for the width of the square's edges? How would that affect our probability of winning? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share.